Well, it's one of the stories I always like to tell about art and money, actually, because artists are generally thought to be unconcerned with money, above money. They paint, you know, art for art's sake, all that kind of thing, but art is about, you know, even making art as a kind of job, always was a job, and, uh, you know, people need to exist, they need to buy bread, they need to, uh, you know, have vegetables and uh, meat and whatever it is they need and clothes, etc., etc., and even they want art for other purposes. So, of course, the first exhibition I organised, uh, one of the first exhibitions I ever organised was at the Institute of Contemporary Arts in 1974, and it was called Art into Society, Society into Art, Seven German Artists, and one of those artists was Joseph Boyce. And Joseph Boyce, of course, is the archetypal artist who is not interested in money, but in social causes, the revolution, higher things, etc., etc., etc. And uh, he said to me, oh, Norman, I only need three blackboards for my performance, and I want to engage with the public. You know, it was in those days, post-1968, you know, the days of the, revol you know, the so-called student revolutions in Europe, etc., etc., the time of Rudy Dutschke and, I don't know, Barclay and Marcuse, all those, you know, beautiful things that perhaps people are beginning to become quite interested again in now. And so he said to me, Norman, I want these three blackboards and I want to engage with the public. I just want, you know, we had these other artists, one of them was Hans Harker, another was Gustav Metzger in that show. But to get back to Joseph Boyce, uh, he wanted these three blackboards. So where do you get three kind of school blackboards on easels? But somehow, and I don't exactly know where, I did a little bit of research as, you know, the exhibitions organizer, and I managed to find a depot with hundreds of blackboards. And so instead of bringing three blackboards, I brought a hundred blackboards to the ICA and I just put them in the office at the top of, you know, just as where you came in, I just put 100 blackboards and Joseph Boyce turned up for the exhibition and he saw these 100 blackboards and he got actually rather excited. And so he decided to make this big sculpture out of the blackboards, which ended up by being called Directive Forces. And he would engage with the public sometimes. So when he came in the morning at 12 o'clock, he left at 8 o'clock. Then for three or four days, he had to go to Ireland to meet, I don't know, no, he actually went to Scotland to meet Jimmy Boyle, if you remember about some of you will remember Jimmy Boyle, the artist in, you know, who was in, in jail and he had to go to Ireland for something to do with, I don't know, with the IRA or something like that. I can't remember exactly. And, uh, but basically he came at 12 o'clock and he would leave at 8 o'clock in his big fantastic coat and his hat and he stayed the entire time. I mean, he would have carrots in his, you know, a, bit of, a few carrots in his pocket, bits of celery. So, I mean, he didn't eat or drink. He didn't go to the bathroom or anything. He just stayed there the entire time. It was a kind of performance, you know, classic performance art that he was doing. So he would take these blackboards and he, you know, he would say, and he would just throw them onto the floor. It would make an incredible noise. And he filled the entire floor of the ICA with blackboards. Hmm? But what I do remember fantastically clearly, and it was a kind of, a kind of almost a cathartic moment in my life, was as the exhibition finished and the blackboards, you know, I mean, the exhibition's finished and of course, the, you know, the blackboards have to be packed, you know, and, you know, the thing about, uh, about, uh, about uh, uh, chalk and blackboards, of course, uh, it's quite fragile. So they had to be kind of fixed. So we had fixative, all the blackboards, he used a, a kind of fixative. And then when we ran out of fixative, he said, oh, it's fine to use hairspray. So I went to Boots or something like that. I bought dozens and dozens of aerosols with hairspray which you know was slightly smelly but I mean they function he would you know, do this uh, uh, the uh, he would spray the blackboards and indeed he would come in sometimes even a little bit early and do a little bit of restoration because people were walking on the blackboards you know because by the time the exhibition was getting uh, reaching its end everybody had to walk on the blackboards and he was very keen to preserve what was on the blackboards but the great thing was when he said I was with him and with Rene Block the dealer and he said to me, Norman, how do we turn this thing into money? I, that's to say, how, be, and, you know, the German is rather good at that. It was kind of German, the German language. Wie wollen wir diese, diese Arbeit ins Geld 
umfunktionieren. Also, how do we change this thing into money? Because, you know, and of course at that time he was very, he had his free international university, and I dare say he wanted, you know, everything costs money, and in order to finance the university. But anyway, whatever it is, he wanted, uh, there was this amazing line, was how do we turn this work of art into money? And I just thought that was just a fantastically sort of touching and also interesting and very pertinent story for your, uh, for your, uh, uh, for your uh, little symposium or discussion on Friday. How do we turn art into money? Joseph Boyce was an artist of, you know, the kind of conceptual generation you think of. And that whole conceptual generation in its time, you know, the Donald Judds, the Carl Andres, the, uh, the Larry Wieners, they were using you know, even art and language and so on. How, you know, they were making art almost deliberately to avoid the issue of money. And in the end, if you want to buy a Carl Andre, if you want to buy a pile of authentic bricks by Carl Andre, they'll cost you a lot of money now. And you know, the dealers and even Carl Andre himself is more than happy, you know, to see his bank balance sort of expand.